When you study art in the wrong way, it takes a really long time to see any progress. But when you do it the right way, you see immediate shifts. Within a week, you can learn how to draw the face. You can learn how to draw the body. And today I'm going to show you a very simple, very easy method for learning how to draw literally anything from your imagination. Literally anything. The reason it feels like it takes so long to get good at art is because we do an unconscious practice where we rep out box after box. We put bodies in a bunch of different proportions and different perspectives, hoping that the brain will unconsciously understand that to use this information for later. To set ourselves up to understand how to draw anything, we need to understand how the brain works. You see, when we are drawing, our brain sees things in symbols. So your brain understands how the torso of the body works slightly different than how my brain understands it. And my brain understands it slightly differently than how Kim Jong-ji understood how to draw the torso. Actually, in reality, Kim Jong-ji's understanding of how to draw anything was leagues above my own. Until you've had a perspective shift, until your mind sees the symbol in a different way, your art will continue to look the same. And the thing is, is we try to change these symbols in our mind through studying and practice unconsciously. If we just draw a bunch of boxes on the page, hopefully that will change how our brain recognizes the symbol and we'll be able to better understand how to draw a tiger or how to better draw a human body. But the thing is, is that's by going at it in a very slow process. We want to attack the subconscious mind directly and show it exactly what we want it to draw. The second layer of science that we're going to use to build this technique so that we can learn how to draw anything in a really quick amount of time is that the brain learns by doing an action and then correcting it by looking at reference of how to do it in the correct way. That's why they call failure the stepping stone to success because every beginner starts in a certain place. It doesn't matter what subject we're talking about. You start in a certain place and you do an action in a certain way. You draw the head or you draw the face in a particular style. And now if we can show the brain, if the brain can see and understand why drawing it in this style is not as appealing as drawing it in this style, if we can communicate that to the brain directly, then the brain will make instant shifts. The faster you can get between doing an action and then seeing and understanding where you went wrong is where your brain will get that learning. If you're just simply drawing a bunch of bodies on a piece of paper in different perspectives, you're not showing immediately your brain what it needs to be correcting. But when you can fail quickly, draw the body from a reference and then see exactly what you went wrong and why you went wrong, that's when the shift can happen. So let's dive into what the special technique is using both of these layers of science so that we can learn how to draw anything from imagination really, really quickly. The very first thing you want to do as a beginner is grab a reference, preferably one from an artist, because an artist has already done the big job for us, which is breaking down a character into its most basic, simple shapes. Our job now is to find those basic shapes and how that artist was able to dissect the human form into these basic shapes that look appealing to the eye. Now you want to trace over that drawing into simplified shapes that you can repeat regardless of what position or what pose the character is in. This builds familiarity with your brain. What you're doing is training your artist's eye. Regardless of what character or pose you're looking at, you'll be able to see those shapes that you've repeated over and over and over again with this practice. This is what passive learning looks like. Eventually within this exercise, we're gonna move into active learning and how to properly attack the mind so that we can learn as quickly as possible. Step number two, you wanna now copy to the best of your ability, the tracing and the simplified shapes that you've done over the artist's work or the real life reference. Remember when you are doing these practices, the goal is not to unconsciously try to copy what you're seeing. We're trying to communicate to our brain these shapes and these forms. So when you're drawing the square for the torso, understanding that this is a square in space, the more that you can talk to yourself while you are drawing to understand what shapes you're putting on the page, the better you are able to communicate to your brain what you're going after, what the goal is of being able to draw anything from your imagination. And these form lines that bend and curve around the shape continue to help communicate to the mind that this shape is 3D and moving in space. This way, whenever we move the shape into different perspectives or proportions, and we put these form wrapping lines, our brain will understand how we are moving these shapes in different perspectives. Now onto step three is where the active learning comes. You wanna take your drawing and overlay it with your tracing. And you wanna to try to notice exactly where the differences are between your drawing 
and the tracing drawing. You want to make physical notes on the page onto what you want to focus on or what went wrong. And when you see what went wrong, you can start to dissect how it went wrong. What was the specific thing in your mind that you changed from the original reference? And why did you change it? How can you change it better for the next time? These are things that you can communicate with your brain in order to show it that we want to change the symbol. The brain drew the leg or the torso in a specific way. We now want to communicate that that way might not be the correct way. And this new way is how we want to start drawing. And we can see that by overlaying our drawings with the tracing drawing. The benefit of an exercise like this is that it's very quick, meaning you fail very quickly. And the more that you're able to fail and see where you're failing, how you're failing, the more that you can correct yourself and figure out how to change that shape that your brain has. The faster you can change the idea in your mind of what the torso is or how the pelvis works in different perspectives, the more consciously familiar you get yourself with these basic shapes, the more you will have the ability to draw anything from your imagination. In this example, we're drawing the human body, but you can take this to drawing any animal or any environment because the world is made up of simple shapes. And if you know what shapes make up the world, you can basically draw anything that your mind can come up with. The key idea that I wanna stress very importantly here is that we are not trying to unconsciously draw here where we see the line in a specific way and then trying to draw that line. We're trying to understand how a sphere is being placed in 3D space. When we can understand how the shape is being placed in 3D space, well then we can draw it in any perspective or any proportion that we want because our brain will have a complete understanding of it. The more of a beginner you are, the more quote unquote mistakes there will be popping up inside of your drawing compared to the reference. Instead of trying to look and make notes on every single nuance that is incorrect, focus on the foundation of the drawing first. So for drawing the pose, the foundation is gonna be the torso and the pelvis. Focus on, is it in the correct position, the proportion and perspective? Did you tilt the hips in the right direction? Is the torso leaning properly so that the character looks like he or she is in balance? If not, start over again with the same drawing. The faster that you can fail with your drawings, the faster you can see how to do them correctly. If you're a complete beginner, I recommend doing this exercise for the same pose six or seven times until you've really wrapped your brain around how the forms lay in perspective and how the proportions work relative to each other. This exercise puts together both passive learning and active learning. Passively, the brain is starting to be able to develop the artist's eye where we can take the body and break it down into simple recognizable shapes that we start to recognize ourselves. And the active part of the learning comes from taking our drawing and overlaying it with the artist's drawing and seeing where our proportions are off and how we can change the perspective of each individual simple shape. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I'll see you in the next one.